Meredith Morakovitz and Paul O'Neill. Yes, we are here because people are b missing baseball so much. I thought, why not take a trip down memory lane with your 1998 Yankee squad? Let me jump. 98. Okay, we're a pretty good team that year. Yeah, yeah, they're pr pretty good that year. Um, how about we play a game called Most Likely? You tell me which teammate is most likely to do the thing that I'm going to ask. So we'll start with most likely to pick up the tab at dinner. Um, let me see, 1998, I'm gonna say Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter, really, young, a young Jeter, really picking Just up the tab. To yeah, he wanted to make his footprint. He and Tino and Orhe used to used to go out a lot, and uh, I saw it happen. Now I know you still see Tino, Jorge, and Derek probably occasionally. Who would pick up the tab now? Uh gee, better pick up the tab. <laughs> but uh, you know, we used to play a game. It was funny. You would throw credit cards out there, and uh, the the waiter would pick one, and whoever he picked, you know, you'd kind of sort them like cards. So you you could have a good day or a bad day. A little credit card roulette. I like it. Right. Who is who would be most likely on that team to miss the bus? Bernie. <laughs> that, that, that's a no brainer. Bernie could be. Uh, Bernie didn't know what city or what time it was half the time anyway. So yeah, definitely Bernie. I also heard through the grapevine that he liked to take naps as well. So he'd fall asleep during the day before he was supposed to get the bus. <laughs> Exactly. Or he'd fall asleep on the bus or five minutes before the game. It's just uh, people have different personalities and uh, different schedules. Bernie was on his own, believe me. Pretty remarkable, too, with such a laid-back attitude, the intensity he had and how skilled he was when he was playing. The, the preparation was so different than I imagine the way you prepared. Yeah, I mean, if you look at, like I said, different personalities, different things, um, Bernie could be playing the guitar five minutes before he went out for a World Series game, or he could walk out after he just struck out and, and lost the game like nothing happened because he knew he was good enough to, to you know, to get it together by tomorrow, which the rest of us would be pulling our hair out thinking we may never get another hit. Now, the Yankees have always been like a family, and most baseball teams are. Oftentimes you see kids running around the clubhouse who on that 98 team was most likely to have their kiddos in the clubhouse? Uh, Pettit had his kids in the clubhouse a lot. I had my kids in the clubhouse a lot. Uh, you know, the older players, uh, you know, being myself, uh, you know, our, our kids used to understand what it was to be in the locker room. That's pretty awesome. And I can't imagine being a kid being around that uh, and able to grow up with that type of atmosphere all the you time. You know, Mary, it's uh, funny because even back then, that's back when all the players actually sat in the locker room. So if the kids were in there, they actually had, you know, conversations. Tim Raines used to tease my kids. My kids to this day still talk about some of the jokes and the teasing that Tim Raines did. Oh, that's so cool. How about who was most likely to say something to you when you were on a hot streak? Uh, probably Tino. Uh, Tino and I used to talk more about hitting than a lot of other players because we were both left-handed and we both faced a lot of the same left-handed pitchers. So we would kind of give each other scouting reports on how they would pitch us. So uh, I had a lot of conversations uh, with Tino about hitting. Who is most likely, if you are going through a little cold period, to say something to you? Don Zimmer. <laughs> <laughs> Zim used to tell me all the time, you know, if you don't like this job, I got a concrete guy in Cincinnati. He guarantees he'll give you a job. So Zim always had a way to kind of get under my skin, but he was able to do it just because of his personality and what he was to this team. Oh, my God, that's so funny. How about who is most likely to get a visit from Mr. Steinbrenner? Oh, my. Um <laughs> Usually those happen during like a big series. Like if you would go to Boston and it meant a lot, Mr. Steinbrenner would show up. So as far as a meeting, uh, probably the starting pitcher, uh, you know, it could have been Clemens, it could have been Yusina, it could have been anybody, but probably the starting pitcher for the night of a big game. Paul, thank you so much for playing along.